Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Can I tell you something? Believing doesn't cost anything. Unbelief makes you miserable. Believing makes you happy. I want to talk to you today about always believing. Coming to Christ like a little child and just say, I believe. I trust you. I believe. I may not see it. I may not feel it. But I believe. Let's look at the raising of Lazarus in John chapter 11. You don't have to wonder if your kids are going to turn out all right. You can believe they will. And even if they're in trouble right now, you can believe they're going to change. <laughs> Let me ask a question. How many of you want to enjoy your life? All right, you cannot do that unless you learn how to believe. <laughs> we go from faith to faith to faith to faith, not from faith to doubt and unbelief and back to faith and, well, I can believe this, but I can't believe that. And we just, just believe. It drives the devil nuts. Come like a little child and just believe. In John chapter 11, there's a wonderful account of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And we can get many great examples out of this, but let's start in verse 5, John 11, verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. They were his dear friends, and he held them in loving esteem. Therefore, because he loved them, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, He still stayed two days longer in the same place and didn't bother to go and help him. Because he loved him, you would think that he would have ran right over there and fixed the problem. But do you see that? Because he loved him, he waited two more days. See, you think when you're having to wait, that means God doesn't love you. According to this, it's a symptom that he does love you. <laughs> Because maybe God's got something deeper in mind than your immediate relief. Yeah. You know what? If I didn't go through that whole cancer thing for any reason other than to stand up and, and give other people hope. Sometimes we go through things and it doesn't even have anything to do with us. It's something that God's using us for for somebody else's encouragement later on in life. And you don't have to figure out what you did wrong or what your sin is or, you know, why doesn't God love me and all that junk. You just say, God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. I love him and the devil is not going to win. This is going to work out for my good. He loved them. <laughs> Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Therefore, he waited and didn't go help them right then. Uh, you're not getting as much out of that as I do, but it just, that just amazes me. Okay, verse 21. Lazarus, of course, is dead now. Martha said to Jesus when he finally did show up, Master, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Well, how often do we think, well, God, if you would have been here, this wouldn't have happened. And what God wants us to know is it doesn't matter that it happened. I can still give you a resurrection. <laughs> Why do we think that God is able to help us not to have problems, but he's not able to solve our problem, even though we've had it for a long time? Can I just tell you, you've got a resurrection coming. Yeah. Amen? If you had been here, <laughs> let's don't ever say that to God. Why did you let this happen? I don't understand. You could have done something about this. Why didn't you do something about this? 
I used to wonder about that with the abuse that I went through in my childhood because I prayed when I was a kid and I asked God to get me out of that situation. I even prayed things that weren't so good, like I prayed for my dad to die and stuff that really wasn't great. I prayed for my mother to get the courage to leave him and that didn't happen. And so even though I prayed, nothing happened. But you know what? I've given up trying to figure all that out. What I do know is that God didn't deliver me from it, but He did bring me through it, and I came out strong. If you would have been here, then this wouldn't have happened. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. And Martha said, well, I know that he's going to rise again in the resurrection on that last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Verse 32, now when Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she dropped down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you would have been here. <laughs> so Mary and Martha both got the same story. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Now, I want you to watch these next few verses. When Jesus saw her sobbing, and the Jews who came along with her also sobbing, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And I can tell you, he wasn't moved, and it wasn't their tears that was making him feel that way, it was their unbelief. Watch this. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. He chafed in spirit and sighed and was disturbed. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said, well, come and see. In verse 35, and Jesus wept. He wasn't weeping for Lazarus. He already knew he was going to raise him from the dead. He wasn't weeping for Mary and Martha because they'd lost their brother because he already knew he was going to raise him from the dead. Matter of fact, he waited and let him die so he could raise him from the dead. <laughs> Whew, I love this. Jesus wept. I wonder how often he weeps over our unbelief. I wonder how often... Jesus cries because he just wants us to trust him. To just say, God, I trust you. I don't understand it. It sure hurts. It doesn't seem fair. But I trust you. And if you're up for it, I think it's even a great thing to get to the point in your life where we stop asking God why about everything. Some things just aren't any of our business. There are some things that are just deeper in God that we are, there's no way we're going to understand it because it's a spiritual thing. Yeah, well, you're not liking that too much. But. <laughs> I mean, if we need to know why something happened because it's going to be a good, valuable lesson for us, then God will tell us. But if we don't need to know, He's not going to tell us. So why drive yourself nuts trying to figure out something that only God knows and He's not telling you? John 11:40 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Many times if I sign a book for somebody, I'll write that scripture in, John 11:40, Because this is what it said. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you and promise you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? The King James, I, I like even better, it says, only believe and you will see the glory of God. Now the word glory, if you look at, if you study that word, it means the manifestation of all of God's excellencies. The bringing out in the open where it can be seen all of the goodness of God and God's most excellent things. So when God says, if you will only believe, that's all he, only believe. <laughs> only believe. That's why we're called believers, by the way. 
only believe, you will see the glory of God. You will see the manifestation of God's goodness and excellence in your life. Can I encourage you not to look at one day in your life, or one month in your life, or even one year in your life, and start determining all these things about God from that one year? Look at your life as a whole. You know, if I wanted to just stare at the first 18 years of my life, I'd probably want to go hang myself. And then to tell you the truth, the next five weren't all that great either because I married a guy just to get away from the situation I was in. I thought nobody would ever want me and he was goofier than I was. And so, you know, that was just another five-year nightmare. So by the time I was 23, I could never remember ever having been happy. Never. I could not ever remember ever having been happy. Never. So I didn't have a great start. And if I just looked at those years, I'd be in a really bad mood right now. But I got to look at all the rest of it too. I got to look at what God's doing now and, and how he's using that and how that fit into my life. Amen. You know, there may be some terrible things that have happened to you, but God's still got some other ingredients to add into your life. He's still got some other stuff to throw into that life happening thing that's going to make it turn out pretty good. It's going to make it tasty. You know, if you got too much of this in a cake mix, you throw enough sugar in that baby, you're going to get it tasting all right. <laughs> so maybe you've had a lot of owl days and not a lot of wild days, but I think you've got some more wild days coming. Amen? Amen. Now listen. Jesus said, roll away the stone. Oh, Lord, he's been dead four days. He's already stinking. <laughs> like that matters. Roll away the stone. Lazarus, come out. And out he came, still wrapped in grave clothes. And then I love what Jesus said, take off the grave clothes. And you know what? That's partially my message today. Many of you have come out, so to speak. You are born again, but you're still going around in grave clothes. You're wrapped up in gloom and doom and bad attitudes and, you know, just yeah, 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 yeah. Take off the grave clothes and start living life. Amen? Come out. Take off those grave clothes. Get them off. Lift up your heads and lift up your hands and say, I trust God. I believe and I will see the glory of God. I believe, I believe, I believe. I want us to put up several scriptures on the screen. We're just going to look at these together. Matthew 8, 13. Then to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, and it shall be done for you as you have believed. <laughs> and the servant boy was restored to health at that very moment. That's why I've been encouraging people for a couple of years now, when you come to my conferences or even when you watch my TV program, even if not a word is said about physical healing, while you're receiving the Word of God, if you have a sickness or a disease in your body, believe that while you're receiving the Word, that that sickness and disease can be driven out of your body by the anointing that's on the Word of God. See, I think we'd get a lot more out of everything if we believe for more. We believe for nothing and get nothing, then we don't understand why we're getting nothing. Why don't you believe for a lot, and even if you get half of it, you're better off than if you believe for nothing. Don't ever go to church and just plop down in a chair and wait to see what's going to happen. This is not a show. We're not putting on a show. If that's what I was doing, I would have quit a long time ago. I'm here today to change lives. I'm here to raise people's faith and to give them hope. But I need your help. I want you coming in saying, I believe God's going to touch me today. I believe God's going to heal me today. I believe I'm going to get the answer that I need today. I believe, I believe, I believe. I 
I have recently changed my morning confession. I used to say, really? I mean, just like, I usually do it before I ever get out of bed, but I don't get very far. And I would say, I believe that something good is going to happen to me today. And I believe that something good is going to happen through me today. Don't ever stop it to me. Let something get through you. God wants to use you. But I changed it about two weeks ago, and I'm not saying that anymore. I've upgraded my faith. Now I'm saying, God, I believe that something good is happening to me right now. <laughs> I believe something is happening right now. I think a lot of times we believe for things that we've already got. And what God wants us to do is get in agreement with Him and say, I know this is mine. I know that I'm right with you through the blood of Christ. doesn't matter how I feel. I know there's no condemnation. I know that you love me. I know that I'm anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. I know that I have value. And something good is happening in me and through me right now. Come on, would you upgrade your faith? We don't need to pray and then wait and see if God's working. <laughs> we need to pray and then, then after that, I mean, you can pray however many times you want to, but really, once you pray and ask God for something, I think the best thing to do after that is every time it comes to your mind, just say, God, I thank you that you're working on that. Thank you, God, that you're working on that. I'm going to see the breakthrough. Thank you that you're working on it. Just because we don't see anything doesn't mean God's not working. You know what the Bible says? As long as we believe God is working. Everybody say, I believe. I believe. Mark 9, 23. And Jesus said, you say to me, if you can do anything, why all things are possible to him who believes. <laughs> Acts 16, 31. And they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And I love that last verse, and this applies to both you and your household as well. <laughs> Look at that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. In James 2.23 says that when we believe, we are considered right with God. That's what gives us right standing with God. Romans 15.13. This is also a real great verse that I love. May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing. <laughs> How are you going to get joy and peace? Not in doubting. In believing. May the God of your hope fill you with joy and peace in believing. Many years ago, I remember I was having a really bad day. I just lost my joy and lost my peace which, by the way, we never do. <laughs> we might not be operating in it, but it's not lost, it's in us. But I'm saying, oh God, I just don't have any peace. I feel a heaviness. I don't know what's going on. In desperation, I walked over to my promise box on the counter. You know, that's a, I don't know if any of you have ever seen one of those, but it's a little long box, or sometimes they're on a Rolodex, and it's, scriptures and boy you can just try to flip into a miracle for yourself that day <laughs> it's kind of like the way we always say god i'm just oh i need a word god please <laughs> you have behaved wickedly and thou shalt die Ooh. That didn't work. Let's try something else. That's dangerous stuff, by the way. But you know, if you flip long enough, you'll get something you can. 
But anyway, I went over to my box and I, that time I got a good one. It was Romans 15, 13. Joy and peace are found in believing. And I knew right away what God was telling me. You're miserable because you stopped believing. I said, you're miserable because you stopped believing. I said, you're miserable because you stopped believing. You're miserable because you stopped believing. <laughs> our believing determines our living. Our quality of life is determined by what we believe. What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your past? What do you believe about your future? Go home and have a meeting with yourself. <laughs> I'm serious. Go home and have a meeting with yourself and sit down, get quiet for an hour, and just ask yourself, what do I believe? What do I believe? If you believe that God loves you and that He's for you and that He's got a good plan for you and that He's not mad at you, and that he forgives you, and he's merciful. Wow. You better be careful. You might have a good day. <laughs> and if you believe that God is with you, and all things are possible with God, and that there's nothing that he can't change, and that he's working in you right now, wow. You might even end up being a blessing to somebody else. <laughs> Wouldn't that be far out radical Christianity? Woo! That's really over the top. And then in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3, oh my, 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 I need more time that I don't have, but here we go. For we who have believed do enter the rest of God. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We who have believed do enter the rest of God. That rest is not a rest from work. It's a rest in work. It means that while you're doing your life and you're living and you're handling the problems of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you trust God, if you believe, then you enter the rest of God. You go about everything that you're doing with a rest, an internal rest. It's not a taking a nap rest, but it's an internal rest. And I can tell you that having entered the rest of God is the absolute most beautiful place that you can possibly be. Because you know, here's what it feels like. You know God's going to do something. You know it'll be right. You don't know what it's going to be. You don't really care. You don't know when it's going to be. You don't care about that either. Because when you're in that place of rest, none, you don't have to have anything proven to you. Nothing has to be proven to you. It doesn't matter to you how you feel or what you see or what you don't see because you've, you've got it in here. God is taking care of this. God's got it. God has got this. Why not just say, today I'm going to elevate my faith, and I've decided to do what believers are supposed to do. I'm going to believe. Just It's very important to learn how to enjoy your journey in life. And one of the ways that you can do that is by simply believing. Believe the promises of God. Believe the best of people. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope and joy fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Sometimes if you're miserable, you simply find out that you've just gotten negative and you need to just make a decision to get back to believing God's word. Just believe what he says. This community likes boys. 
So they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take them out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young. But because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me to the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future, change her situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl, or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding, and do something that you know will make a difference. And so I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed and elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld.